I'm Tanya Mosley from Fresh Air, and I'm coming to Pasadena for a special taping of my podcast, Truth Be Told. The topic, how to find joy when the world feels like a dumpster fire. August 31st at the Crawford. Tickets at LAS.com slash events. LAS Studios. Today on the LA Report, the strike by the Writers Guild of America that's halted Hollywood, it's a milestone. LA city leaders want to crack down on those who rent out RVs to unhoused Angelinos who park them on the street. And if it's so easy to vote in California, then it really is easy. Why don't more of us vote? It's Wednesday, August 9th. I'm Nick Roman. This is the L.A. Report from L.A.S. 89.3. It's been 100 days since the Writers Guild of America, the union for movie and TV script writers, began its strike against Hollywood studios and streamers. And now that SAG-AFTRA, the Actors Union, has gone on strike, Hollywood production is essentially shut down. The last time the scriptwriters went on strike was 2007. It ended on the 100th day. LA's reporter Robert Garova says, not this time. Last uh, Friday, the, the Writers Union met with the Association of Motion Picture and Television Producers to to really talk about maybe possibly beginning uh, negotiations. Um, according to the WGA, that talk did not go all that well. Uh, the WGA said in a statement, the committee does not intend to leave anyone behind or make merely an incremental deal to conclude this strike. LAS reporter Robert Garova. The Friday meeting was the first time the scriptwriters and the Hollywood studios and streamers had talked contracts since May. We asked the studios and streamers for comment. They say they remain united in their desire to reach a fair and equitable deal. We've mentioned this before, but it bears repeating. One of every four unhoused Angelinos lives not on the street, but in an RV on the street. Often a broken down RV without a working shower or toilet, often one they don't own. LA's housing reporter David Wagner says LA city leaders want to crack down on those who rent out those RVs. A city council committee has voted to advance a proposal to crack down on so-called van lords. The motion from Westside Council member Tracy Park asks the city attorney to draft a rule that, if approved by the full council, would ban the rental of RVs on public streets. Many LA voters want vehicle encampments gone. But those who can't afford L.A. rents value the sense of safety that comes from living in a motorhome. L.A. is housing reporter David Wagner. Last week, the city of L.A. worked with Tracy Park's office to clear a large RV camp in Playa del Rey. When we come back, an update on the biggest fire in California so far this year. And why aren't more of us voting? Support for LAist comes from the Emmy-nominated Apple original film, Still, a Michael J. Fox movie nominated for seven Emmy Awards, including Outstanding Documentary Film or Nonfiction Special. Following this podcast, you can hear Academy Award-winning and Emmy-nominated director Davis Guggenheim take you behind the scenes of this remarkable film, Rated R, streaming on Apple TV+. Plus. More at fyc.appletvplus.com. Quiz Show Podcast Go Fact Yourself, where celebrities are quizzed to find out why they love what they love, is back for another live show. Guests this time are Alex Borstein from The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel and Mad TV and Ego Wodum from Saturday Night Live. Join the fun August 12th at the Crawford in Pasadena. Tickets at LAS.com slash events. This is the L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. The 93,000-acre York fire in the Mojave National Preserve is just about done burning. L.A. science reporter Jacob Margola says now comes the recovery for the charred desert, including a whole lot of charred Joshua trees. It's unclear exactly how many Joshua trees burned, but burn they did. 
That said, there is some hope. The fire burned at low and moderate severity in lots of places, meaning even if the tops of the trees burned, their roots may have survived, and the Joshua trees can start to resprout. Todd Eskew is with the U.S. Geological Survey. Are the resprouts going to be sufficient to start the population again? That's a really important question. The situation is tenuous. If we fall back into many years of intense drought, they may not be able to regrow. And even if they do, they have to survive little rabbits coming along and eating their shoots that pop up. Oh, and in the long term, it can take hundreds of years for Joshua trees to regrow. And climate change is making it so that the places where they grew forever before may no longer be habitable to them. For LAS 89.3, I'm Jacob Margolis. Ever heard of the drug xylazine? No? Well, maybe you've heard of its street name, Trank. It's an animal tranquilizer. The LA County Sheriff's Crime Lab says it's showing up in heroin and fentanyl seized by deputies and drug busts. It's also showed up in counterfeit Norco, Percocet, and Xanax pills. Xylazine is bad news. It's a zombie drug that hikes the risk of overdose. At the beginning of the year, we started seeing kind of more of it on the West Coast. We know it's much more prevalent on the East Coast, but we are seeing it in Los Angeles County. That's Dr. Siddharth Puri at L.A. County Public Health. He says anyone who uses street drugs should watch for xylazine. There are test strips that can spot it. Voting in California, it's never been easier. You get a ballot in the mail. You can vote in person. If you're not registered to vote, you can do that at the very last minute at the polls. So why aren't more voters voting? A new Berkeley IGS poll says 71% of the state's regular voters are white and over the age of 50. Only 14% of Latinos vote regularly, and those who are are typically older. Fernando Guerra is a professor of political science at Loyola Marymount. He says you want more people to vote? Well, convince them they should. Given all these new ways of voting, we really haven't changed how we approach voters, how we communicate to voters. And Pomona College political science professor Sarah Sadwani says there are ways to do that. Really relying upon trusted messengers within the neighborhoods and the communities themselves to get the word out. Sarah Sadwani at Pomona College says retail politics like candidate forums or candidate meet and greets could also go a long way to get more voters to vote. Thanks for listening to The L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. Be sure to listen again tomorrow. The L.A. Report is produced by Libby Rainey. Megan Garvey is the executive editor. Catherine Mailhouse is our director of content development. Our engineer, Tui Mao. Original music by Scott Kelly. You can read more about the stories you hear at LAist.com. You can also listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. You know, listeners like you help make the LA Report possible, so please donate at LAist.com slash join. This podcast is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. Support for Alleyist comes from the Emmy-nominated Apple original film, Still, a Michael J. Fox movie. It's been nominated for seven Emmy Awards, including Outstanding Documentary Film or Nonfiction Special, and it's now streaming on Apple TV+. Here's Academy Award-winning and Emmy-nominated director, Davis Guggenheim. I was looking for my next movie, and I, I frankly, I was in a kind of a dark place. My kids were leaving the house because they're going off to college and moving out, and COVID was happening, and getting older and I was a little dark and uh, I read this interview with Michael in the New York Times and it made me smile. He was describing this terrible fall he had and uh, it was really horrible. He was stuck on the ground and his arm was broken and he couldn't reach the phone and he was all alone. But the way Michael told the story was beautifully written but also strangely funny. It made me laugh and I was like, wait a minute, that's interesting. Then I read more and I said, oh my God, he's a really good writer. The editing of this film is outstanding. That was Michael Hart. The editor of Michael Hart is who's um, just a genius and, and very much sort of a, a third leg on the stool in terms of the storytelling of this movie. Total Back to the Future nut and knows all of Michael's movies. Watched everything. Watched every episode of Family Ties. Watched every episode of Spin City. Everything. 
and started to show me scenes where, because my brain went to reenactments and there's, the movie is about half reenactment. In terms of retrospective, is half reenactment and half using Michael's films to tell a story. Like there's a scene in the movie where Michael and Tracy are on a date and they kiss for the first time. You're watching the movie and you think this is when they're meeting. And the audience knows we're not tricking anybody. But Michael Hart deserves the credit for that. The way he did it, it was ingenious. What kind of a vibe were you going for? I wanted to ask this question. It's like, can you make a documentary that feels like an 80s movie? You know, and, cause I, I, and when I pitched it to Apple, I was like, I wanted to have big music. I wanted to have a big score. I wanted it to be funny. I didn't know that we would use footage this way. That's Michael Hart. But the instinct to do that, actually make a documentary that's a wild ride, that was... That was the instinct. What was it like to work with Michael J. Fox on telling such a personal story? Michael was a total open book. He was like, whatever you want. And it's true. Like a lot of people say, oh, t ask me anything. But it really was ask me anything. Yeah. And it really was nothing's off. And, and we, in, in our conversations, we went far afield. We talked about everything. The one thing he asked me was no violins, which I took to mean no pity. We don't want to make a film that's like about someone who has... Parkinson's and we're gonna we're gonna feel sorry for them. I didn't set out to make an optimistic film. That's not the case at all. We didn't pull any punches. And I wanted to capture the joy and the and the, and the high highs and the low lows and, and, and take people for that wild ride. That's Davis Guggenheim, the Academy Award winning and Emmy nominated director of Still, a Michael J. Fox movie. It's now streaming on Apple TV Plus and it's rated R. You can find more information at fyc.appletvplus.com.